Hello there. I'm Irv Shapiro with the Dr. Vax channel, and I'm a very lucky guy. I have the opportunity here on the Dr. Vax channel to review, to look at, to evaluate, to play with really fantastic consumer grade 3D printers. Today we're going to look at two printers, both at under $1,000, but at very different price points. One's a $500 printer, and one's either $750 or $1,000, depending on whether you assemble it from scratch. So today we're going to look at the Monoprice Ultimate 2 and compare it to the Prusa i3 MK3, which is very similar to the MK3 slash S. So stay tuned and let's learn something together. I have some notes here that I'm going to refer to periodically and put up on the screen to keep me in a sequence that makes sense for this comparison of two really fantastic printers. Let me start by saying you can't go wrong purchasing either printer. They both produce really high quality prints and they do it very easily with all with software that's already on the SD cards that come with the printer. So if you install the software that comes with the printer and you start printing, you're going to get good quality prints with either of these printers. They do have very different price points. Originally, the Monoprice Ultimate 2 was $560. I've seen it recently on sale for $500. The Prusa i3 MK3 or MK3 slash S is a $750 printer as a kit. It is not an easy kit. Typically, it takes people that are new to 3D printing six to seven hours to put that kit together or $1,000 assembled. So different price points. So what we're going to learn today is when should you buy the Monoprice printer and when should you buy the Prusa printer because both, as I said, are excellent printers. Let's start with the print volume. So here are the build plates for the two printers. The smaller one you can see here, I don't know if there's enough contrast in the video, so I'll hold it separate a bit. The smaller one is the Ultimate 2 print surface. It's 200 millimeters by 150 millimeters by 150 millimeters high. Now, that's a reasonable print area, but it's not large. The Prusa is, and I'm gonna refer to my notes to make sure I get it correct, is 210 by 210 by 250. So it can print larger prints on the Prusa than on the Monoprice Ultimate 2. The surfaces are also very different. The Prusas come with a two different types of spring steel bases that are magnetically adhered to the printer. That means you take them off, you flex them to get your print off. They work well, they work very well, and there are aftermarket surfaces that work with the same magnets. The Ultimate 2 takes a very different approach. This is a sheet of glass that's fused to a magnetic surface that then adheres to the print bed. So it's glass held with magnets into the printer. I have on top of this a sheet of build tech. It comes literally with just masking tape. The masking tape works well, but the build tech will be more resilient to problems. What that means though, because this is a sheet of glass, you cannot flex it. To remove a print, what I do, because the prints hold really well to this print surface, is I'll take a single edge razor blade and just slide it under a couple corners and then I find it comes up without problems. So why would you ever want to use this versus this? It's easier to get prints off here because this is unbelievably flat. This is perfectly flat and it's heavy, it conducts heat really well, and I'll tell you, the Ultimate 2 produces what might be the best first layers that, that I've seen on any of the 3D printers I'm using. So they're both solid first layers, they're both good print beds, they have advantages and disadvantages. Um, I would say it's about the same across those two characteristics. So let's look at this chart now and look at some more characteristics. The hot end. 
The Prusa is rated to 300 degrees Celsius. The Ultimate 2 is only rated to 250, and when you go much above it, it will actually stop the print, which is a good thing because there's protection in the Ultimate 2 to make sure it doesn't get too hot. So basically you're looking at materials that you can print at 250 or below. So that's an advantage of the Prusa. Let's look at print times. Very, very interesting. I'm not exactly sure why, because in general, the Prusa is the fastest printer I own. Taking the same model and printing it, let's say on my Ender 3 or my Ender 5 and on the Prusa, it always finishes sooner on the Prusa. It's not just that the slicer reports shorter times, it finishes sooner. I always attributed that to the fact that the Prusa is a direct extrusion printer. That means the extruder is right on top of the printhead, whereas the Enders are Bowden style printers and therefore the filament has to go over a longer distance, retractions have to be much larger, coasting has to be larger, uh, and slows down the prints. But the Ultimate 2 and the Prusa are both direct extruder printers. I think that in general, and I haven't done an exhaustive study of lots and lots of prints, I've done basically the prints you see here on the table and a few more, the Ultimate 2 feels in general, it seems about 20% faster. So it is now my highest speed printer. And if I need to print something that fits on this print bed, I start with the Ultimate 2 because it just gets it done quicker. What about loading filament? It's tricky loading the filament through the filament sensor on the Ultimate 2. It's sort of in the back and hard to get to, but loading it into the extruder is relatively similar on both printers. On the Prusa, if you have the original style filament detection system, it actually pulls the filament right in. I haven't tried the upgraded filament detector. I know it has some different characteristics. I assume it still auto loads filament. On the Ultimate 2, you turn on auto load of the filament. It beeps when it's up to temperature. You foot the filament in and you do have to push a button for it to start pulling the filament through. And the reason is the filament detector is not right on top of the hot end. On the Prusa, the filament detector is right on top of the hot end. Let me show you a picture of the two filament detectors. This is a picture of the Prusa filament detector. You'll see it's on top of the hot end. The second picture is a picture of the Ultimate 2 filament detector, and you'll see it's on the end of a tube. That's not a Bowden tube, it's just a tube to guide the filament. So the filament loading is a little easier on the Prusa, not really a big deal. Next, the cooling systems in both printers are very good. The fans are very good. The direction of the air is very, very good. If anything, the cooling might be a little bit stronger on the Ultimate 2, but it's hard to judge. What is very different is the Prusa is an open frame printer and the Ultimate 2 is fully enclosed. That means you have much better control over the temperature in the Ultimate 2. At least it will stay warmer. Now, staying warmer is not always a good thing. And when we look at quality, we'll see why. In fact, there are times where I've had to leave the doors open on the Ultimate 2 to get a better quality print. However, if you're printing difficult materials, perhaps some PETGs, ABS, the overall recommendation in the industry is use an enclosed printer. So that's going to give an advantage to the Ultimate 2. Next, let's look at print quality. Well, I've done a lot of prints here. Um, some such as these 2X size calibration prints, you can't tell the difference. They're both just outstanding. Then I printed these Polymaker towers. They're also really similar very, very good. There is one difference that I attribute to the slicer. If you look very closely, you can see a slight seam on the print that was printed on the Ultimate 2. That was from Cura version 3.3. Now I have not tried 
creating a profile in the most current version of Cura for the Ultimate 2. I wanted to use the software that came with it, just as I use the software that comes with the Prusa. But overall, these prints are identical. In fact, they both have a slight problem on the inside at this completely horizontal overhang. There's a little bit of drooping underneath on both prints. So then, I stepped it up to a more difficult print. This is the Kickstarter calibration print, but I only printed it at 80%. So I'm not trying to compare these two printers against a vast array of printers. Um, and I knew that these printers would do a good job, but in particular, I wanted to test the towers on the top. Now, this is from the Prusa. I was really surprised that there's a, little, there's a bit of stringing on top. Because I remember printing these in the past and they were perfect on the Prusa. What I attribute that to as I think about it is I'm using a different filament. I'm using all Matter Hacker build filament. I like Matter Hacker build filament because I think you get excellent layer adhesion and I think they're just beautiful and the layer lines more or less disappear. I think it's a really nice filament. But I have noticed now that with Matter Hacker Build Filament, you get a little bit more stringing. Other than that, this print is pretty good. Because it's printed smaller, these overhangs got a little too close. However, the check of printer accuracy, the ability to print the posts that fit in these holes, they all came out without difficulty. This overhang on the bottom is clean on this print. So then I began to print one with the Matter Hacker, and I stopped it because these surfaces were ugly. They were terrible. Now the overhang was actually, overhangs were better than the Prusa. The precision came out just fine. These individual posts all fell out, but these overhangs were really ugly. Now, instead of printing this full model, I made some models in Tinkercad. First, I made a model with the same overhang, um, but solid, it printed perfectly. So I'm not sure what was going on. Then I made a model with the overhang in smaller vertical columns. So you can see here this is open, and these started to droop towards the top, but not as much as this was drooping. So after thinking about that, I realized that perhaps at the longer you print in the Ultimate 2, the warmer the enclosed area becomes. And with PLA, maybe it gets too close to the glass transition temperature. The glass transition temperature, depending on the PLA, is 60 to 70 degrees Celsius. So if you get too close, it's going to start drooping. And in fact, when I reprinted the Kickstarter project, with the doors open, I got almost a perfect print. A little bit of drooping here. I have that same drooping, by the way, on the Prusa. But in fact, the towers are perfect. With the same filament, it is a different color, but it's both Matter Hacker build. With the same filament, um, there's almost no stringing on this print. Now, do I think I could tune this, lower the temperature a little bit, and get as perfect of a print on the Prusa? I do. So in general, they both produce excellent prints. Then I printed some other models on the Ultimate 2 because I've printed lots of things on the Prusa. Um, and boy, they're, they're all gorgeous. The print quality is excellent. And I wanted to push the limit on the Ultimate 2, so I printed some ColorFab XT, which I printed at 240 degrees, and this is also excellent. So in terms of print quality, I think it's a draw. So let's go back to our table. Both of these printers have a bootloader. That means it is possible to upgrade the firmware. In fact, on the Monoprice website, you will find upgraded firmware for your Ultimate 2. However, Prusa updates the firmware like four times a year. What about other characteristics? Overall, the slicers. Well, Monoprice is recommending for this printer Cura and it's a great slicer. Prusa Slicer, though, is fine-tuned for their printing printers, so maybe the slicer gives it a slight advantage, 
because the slicer and the firmware are tuned so closely together. And finally, what about materials? I think it's a draw. The Ultima 2 is going to be a better ABS printer. Now, I have not tried it with ABS. In fact, I've never printed ABS on any of my printers because I print in my basement and I don't want the fumes. But I do use a lot of PETG, a lot of PLA, TPU, all of those other filaments. And if you need an enclosed, consistent temperature, the Ultima 2 is going to be an advantage. But once again, that advantage is a disadvantage with some PLAs, so you may have to open the door and perhaps even turn the heated bed off for upper layers. So now let's go to the next page, look at a couple other attributes of these printers and wrap up a conclusion. In terms of spare parts, I've ordered spare parts from my Prusa direct from uh, Prusa. It does take a while to get them a number of weeks. A complete line of spare parts is available for mono price for the Ultimate 2. I was very surprised because it's a new printer. Spare parts for pretty much everything were listed on the site already, um, and those you can get in a couple days. So more or less a toss up, but maybe you get your parts faster for the mono price. What about support? Prusa's support is world class. I think it's the best of any 3D printer I've owned. Mono price support is good and you can call and they'll answer your call also anytime, but I have found that it's very, not very nuanced. It's more or less, if it's working great, if not, check the website, perhaps send the printer back. So they will take these printers back. You can buy a printer from mono price and if it's not working to your satisfaction, you can just send it back. It's easy to return a printer but I think I would give the edge on support to Prusa because they have extremely knowledgeable people who just concentrate on one printer. Whereas Monoprice support line supports, I don't know, six, seven, eight, ten printers now, a range of printers. In terms of the ecosystem, Prusa is world class. Nobody's been able to compete with that. Now, Monoprice has some very good user communities. There are lots of people buying these printers. This is a brand new printer for Monoprice, so I can't tell you yet what that ecosystem is going to be like. So if we look at the scale on the bottom, in terms of Prusa, if you need the larger print volume and higher temperatures, there's no question. Buy the Prusa, great printer. If you don't need the higher temperatures or the larger print volume, the Monoprice Ultimate 2 is half the price when fully assembled. And the print quality is absolutely outstanding. So folks, I hope this was helpful. I hope you learned something today. If you did, give me a thumbs up, recommend this to people. More importantly, the best thing you can do to help support the channel is share links to the videos with everyone you know. Thanks so much and have a great day.